Okay, I'm reading the book of Revelation. I'm trying to do it fresh where I can uh, hopefully learn something new myself. It's been probably at least three months since I read this book, and I read it often. Uh, but uh, it, it's always good to, to sort of step away and then come back and read it again and hopefully see something you didn't see before. So let's read and see if we can't see something we didn't see before. Revelation 3, And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, what that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful, and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent, if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcomes, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that opens and no man shuts, and shuts and no man opens. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. And so this is a, a critical verse right here, in my opinion. So the synagogue of Satan is obviously uh, those today, we can relate those people of Judaism to the synagogue of Satan that they say they are Jews but they're not they lie okay they are not God's holy people it's those who believe in Jesus Christ that are God's people All right there should be no dispute about that but of course there is but uh, what's interesting here he says I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee the Christian the believer in Jesus Christ so this is this goes all the way back to uh, Genesis uh, three, right? Uh, when really the that's when the prophecy was first uh, told, if you will. But we see we see it all throughout the Bible. And if I could find it real quick. Uh, here in verse 15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay, so when you, you've heard uh, until, uh, until he makes his enemies his footstool, I'm sure you've heard that phrase. It's, it's in the Bible a number of times here. Let's go. Uh, here we go. Hebrews 10. Let's just use this one. From henceforth expecting till his enemies, enemies be made his footstool. So when Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven, like we read in Revelation 1, we are lifted up to meet the Lord. First the dead in Christ, and then those of us which remain are lifted up to meet the Lord and forever shall be with the Lord. Okay. And then the enemies below us are gathered and destroyed. Okay, that's they'll be at our foot. Our I'm sorry, our foot when this happens. Right, that's why uh, it's referenced as the footstool. Okay, or that uh, he shall bruise his heel. Okay, because God's going to stomp them all out. All right, does that make sense? So right here in verse nine, when it says, "I will make them to come and worship before thy feet," that's what this means. We'll be lifted up, and they'll be at our feet, and they'll know. God's going to make them know that God has loved us. All right. Because thou has kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. 
Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcomes will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And unto the church of the Laodosians write, These things saith the, the Amen. I'm sorry, let me try that again. These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spoo thee out of my mouth. All right, it's time to get fired up for the Lord, right? Because thou sayest, I am rich, and am increased in with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyes salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. The Lord loveth, uh, the whom the Lord. Um, I'm sorry. Who? What's that verse go? Uh, whom the Lord loveth, he. Uh, chastens and scourges everyone that he loves, okay? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay, so what uh, it, it's important in my opinion uh, when it says overcome here. I don't know why, but it seems to be confused by a whole lot of people. Overcoming is believing in Jesus Christ. Okay, because He overcame, and we can't overcome ourselves. We need a Savior, but through Jesus Christ we overcome. Because he overcame. All right. Does that make sense? Um, what are you going to do? I mean, think about the alternative. What are you going to do to overcome? You're going to go uh, open a door for somebody. You're going to donate money to the church. Is that overcoming? What What are you going to do? Uh, you know, uh, call somebody names. I, I don't know. What are you going to do to overcome? It was the work. It was already done for us. The only way we can overcome is if we believe in Jesus Christ and he comes into us because he has already overcame. Does that make sense? It's pretty simple, really, but it's amazing how many people are putting uh, trust in their own works rather than the finished works of Jesus Christ. Right? And there's a whole lot of false prophets out there, and you got to be careful I mean, if you, the fact is we all need a Savior, and that's Jesus Christ. If you think you're going to do it on your own, you're going to fail. Guaranteed. Just like every other example in the book, from the beginning to present day, uh, men continue to fail. That's why we need a Savior, and that's Jesus Christ. Okay.